and welcome to Soothing Pod Sleep Stories. My name is Anthony, and I'm going to tell you a wonderful story that will lull you into a peaceful and restful sleep. Tonight we are going on a farmyard adventure and meet the little red hen. But before we go there, let's take a minute to be still. Tuck yourself in bed, take a deep breath, and imagine you are in a beautiful countryside. The air is fresh, clean and quiet. Can you feel the wind in your face? the way it kisses your cheeks softly. Just breathe it in and breathe it out. Once upon a time, there was a farm in this beautiful countryside. This farm was set on a giant piece of land where the air was cool, the sun was warm, and the only sounds you'd hear were the occasional mooing of cows and perhaps the rumbling, sputtering of the farmer's tractor. Every day, the animals in the farm did what they always did. The cows roamed lazily on the hillside, the farm cats chased the rats, and the rats ran around, looking for cheese to eat. There were other animals on the farm too, horses, dogs, and a flock of geese. All the animals on the farm had a lot to keep them busy every day, but the busiest of them all was a little red hen. The little red hen would spend most of her day busy pecking, scratching at the ground this way and that with her claws. Scratch, 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 pickety, peckety, peck. That was her fashion. That's what she'd do. She'd scratch the ground pecking for worms. Yes, big, fat, delicious, juicy, tasty worms. You see, the little red hen had a few children, her chicks, and the nice big worms were just the right food for them. Whenever the little red hen would go scratching for worms, and whenever she'd find one, she'd call aloud, Come, little chickies, chuck, chuck, chuck. And all her little chickies would come running when she called. We're coming, Mama. They would laugh, run and tumble, and almost roll over each other in a hurry to get the worms. Then the little red hen would teach her chickies how to dig for worms too. She was a busy Mama, always looking for the best worms for her kitties. There was a cat on the farm who wasn't nearly as busy as the busy mama hen. Sure, she would chase the rats, but on most days the rats were too fast. And the farmer or the farmer's wife would often bring the cat something to eat, like a tin of tuna, or something to drink, like a saucer of milk. So on most days, the cat would just hang out on the grass, watching the world go by getting a suntan if it was warm enough. By midday, she would stretch out for her nap, take a big yawn and fall asleep for several minutes. The cat did not have a care in the world. Same with the pig, Pete, who lived on the farm. Pete the pig was also well fed by the farmer and the farmer's wife. All he had to do was wait for his slop every day. So Pete the pig didn't have much to worry about. All he did was hang out in his sty, wait for his food, eat and eat some more. It's no wonder that Pete the pig was pretty fat. Now it just so happened that one day, while the little red hen was pecking her way around the farmyard, She happened to dig up something hard. It wasn't wriggling, squiggling around. So it couldn't be a worm. 
It wasn't juicy and red either. It was small and hard, yet long and slender. It was a wheat seed. Wow, clucked the little red hen. She was quite excited. Now she could feed her baby something different. She had heard the farmer's wife talking to a friend about the harvest. And she had learned that from this wheat seed, you plant and take care of it, and then it would grow to become a stalk of wheat. Then you could pluck it out, grind it up, and make flour to bake bread or a cake. It seemed like just the thing for the little red hen to do. And oh, how she wanted to make something special to eat for her babies. She thought of all the delicious cakes she could bake. But she also realized it would be a whole lot of work. From the planting to the watering, to the harvesting and the grinding. Then from the mill to the kitchen, she would have to mix the flour and add the salt, oil, and water. She would have to then knead the dough for a long time, let it rise, and then bake it into a beautiful loaf of bread. Of course, thought the little red hen, if she had someone to help her do all this work, it could be much easier. She thought about the pig, who liked to eat, and would surely want to help her make some bread. She thought of the cat, who liked to nap. Was the cat dreaming of a delicious fresh loaf of bread with butter on top? The little red hen also thought of the rat, who was always scurrying around, stealing food from the other animals. Perhaps he too would be happy to help bake a loaf of bread that would also be his to eat in the end. And so the little red hen went out to the barnyard to call the other animals. Who would like to help me plant this wheat seed? But the pig said, Not I. And the cat said, Not I. And the rat said, Not I. Pete the pig said he would rather stay in his slop of mud and enjoy his afternoon lazily. The cat said she would also rather nap. The sun was so warm and pleasant today and she was quite tired after drinking all that milk. And the rat said that on any other day he would be happy to help plant a seed, but not today, for today he had found a huge chunk of cheese and was busy feasting on it. Well then, said the little red hen, I will plant the wheat seed myself. And that's exactly what she did. The little red hen took the single wheat seed found a plot of land that was perfect for planting, and laid it deeply in the warm, inviting earth. Then she continued to go about her days for the rest of the summer. She watered the seed and tended it, all the while making sure her chicks were well fed with juicy worms. Yes, she kept working hard, scratching and digging and searching for food. Meanwhile, Pete the pig grew quite fat, and the cat grew pretty fat, and the rat grew really fat, but the wheat, it grew tall, and strong, and long, and beautiful. The little red hen looked after it, watered it, and cared for it all by herself, until the day that it was as tall and strong as it would ever be the day it was ready for harvest. When the little red hen saw that her beautiful stalk of wheat had grown just right, and that this would be as tall and strong as it would ever be, she decided to harvest it. She ran to her animal friends excitedly to tell them the good news. Pete the pig, cat, rat, come and see how lovely and tall and strong my wheat has grown. Oh, who would like to help me cut it? I need some help. The little red hen expected that all the animals would be eager to help. So she was quite unpleasantly surprised when she heard their answers. Pete the pig said, Not I. The cat said, Not I. And the rat said, Not I. 
No one wants to help me cut the wheat, said the little red hen. Well, I can't force you to do anything you don't want to do. So I shall cut the wheat myself. And that's just what the little red hen did. She ran over to the farmer's tool shed, found the great big sharp sickle, and started to cut the big plant of wheat. It was tough to do by herself, and the stalk was so high, but she was determined to bake a nice loaf of bread. And so she managed quite nicely to cut and harvest the wheat. Finally, on the ground lay the freshly cut wheat. The little red hen's chicks all gathered round, wanting to know what this new golden stalk was. Come, children, said the little red hen. Soon you shall have a delicious loaf of bread to eat. And all the chicks answered, peep, peep, peep. The little red hen realized that she had been so busy taking care of the wheat that these days she hardly had any time to play with her chicks or teach them how to scratch and dig. She wondered if she was neglecting them. If only she had someone to help her thresh and prepare the wheat, then maybe she would have more time to devote to her children. So she went to the barnyard again, where Pete the pig, the cat and the rat were hanging about, and she called out, Who will help me to thresh the wheat? She expected some sort of happy, willing reply, but all she heard was, Pete the pig grunting, Not I, and the cat meowing, Not I, and the rat squeaking, Not I. As you can imagine, the little red hen was quite discouraged. She didn't want to do everything by herself, but it looked like at this point she had no choice. I guess I will thresh the wheat myself, she sighed, and she did. But first she took the time to feed all of her babies, kiss them good night, and put them all to sleep. After thrashing the wheat, the little red hen realized that the next step would require some greater muscle power. She needed to carry the wheat to the mill and grind it. Of course she could try to carry it herself, but it would be much easier and faster if she had a little help. So she went to the barnyard and called out once more. Does anyone want to help me make bread? I need help to carry the wheat to the mill to be ground. But then came the replies. Not I, said Pete the pig. Not I, said the cat. Not I, said the rat. Oh dear, and poor little red hen. It seemed like all the other animals had something better to do. The little red hen wanted to cry out in frustration and disappointment, but she took her feelings under control, mustered up all of her self-will, and decided to not be upset. Then I shall do it myself, she said aloud. The little red hen soon found she was much stronger than she thought she was. The sack of wheat fit over her shoulders, and with a heave, she carried it all the way to the mill. The mill was a good distance away, and it took nearly half a day for the little red hen to walk all the way there. Along the way, she had to stop and take a break, for the sun was shining hot, and she got tired quite easily. But she just took those breaks as needed, and continued to be happy as she went on her way to the mill. When she finally arrived, the miller told her he would be more than happy to grind the wheat into fine, soft flour to make a loaf of bread for her babies. Happily, the little red hen gave the miller her thrashed wheat, and waited patiently until it was ground and ready to be put in a flour sack. Soon her patience was rewarded. The miller handed the little red hen a full sack of freshly ground flour. She was so excited, soon she would have a beautiful loaf of bread to feed her children. 
she heaved the sack of flour over her shoulders and walked back to the farmyard at an easy pace. She didn't walk too fast or too slow. She needed to conserve her energy on the way back to the barnyard. When she got back, her babies were stirring awake already, and she was very happy to tell them that now she had flour to bake a loaf of bread. The little chicks were so happy to see their mommy. They fluffed up their feathers real big and greeted her on her arrival. They were so excited when she told them about the bread. They could hardly wait to eat it. The little red hen was quite tired by now and decided to go to bed a little earlier than usual. The sun had not yet set, but the light of its fading colours was beautiful. Pretty pink hues, blended with purple, orange, and a tinge of red on the horizon. The little red hen felt exhausted, but was glad to see such gorgeous colours at the end of her long day. She lay down on the straw in the hen house, tucked her head into her own feathers, closed her eyes, and fell straight to sleep. The next morning, the little red hen was up bright and early, for there was indeed work to be done. She set out at once, leaving her chicks to sleep in a little bit longer. Today she would finally mix the flour, let it rise and bake the bread. Now this is the fun part, she thought to herself, and so I am sure that Pete the pig, cat and rat, will want to help me. She made her way to the barnyard to find them. Seeing all three animals chatting in a circle together, she sang out, Who would like to help me mix and knead the dough to bake the bread? But to her dismay, they did not even turn around to face her. Instead, they called out their lazy reply. Not I, said Pete the pig. Not I, said the cat. Not I, said the rat, and they continued huddling together, chatting about what the little red hen assumed were very important matters indeed. Well, I guess I will just mix and knead and bake the bread myself, clucked the little red hen. She walked over to the kitchen, put on her baker's cap and apron, poured her flour over the counter and added some water in the middle of the mound. To the water, she added a pinch of salt and a spoon of yeast. Then she got to work, moulding and mixing, kneading the flour to make a nice, firm, glossy dough. And even here, the little red hen realised she would have to be patient. The dough needed time to rise and time to bake. She gave herself the entire day to do this work, as she was doing it alone. Pete the pig was busy in his sty, rolling about. The cat was powdering her nose, and the rat was practicing hunting for cheese, going round and round in circles. But the little red hen glanced at him, and saw that he was in fact only chasing his own tail. Finally, the hour she had been waiting for arrived. The dough had risen. She had put it in the oven to bake, and now she put on two gloves to pull it out from the heat. When the little red hen opened the door of the oven, a delicious scent wafted out and filled the whole barnyard. Pete the pig, the cat, and the rat all came running, following their noses to find out where this delicious smell was coming from. They all sniffed the air with delight, and then they saw it the little red hen, retrieving a perfect loaf of bread from the oven. How wonderful it looked and smelled! She turned around and showed her audience the beautiful crust, the perfect dents, the wonderful mounds that lie waiting to be eaten. Now, she smiled, who will help me eat this bread? The three waiting animals licked their lips in anticipation. Pete the pig said, I will. The cat said, I will. The rat said, 
I will. But the little red hen said, Oh, no, you won't. I will eat the bread all by myself. And she did. Of course, the little red hen had a lot to feed her babies, and each chick got a crunchy, tasty piece of fresh bread. As for Pete the pig, the cat and the rat, they all learned a very good lesson that day. I hope you enjoyed the story of the little red hen, and I am sure you are helpful to your friends and family whenever anyone needs you. I wish you a good night's sleep, sweet dreams, and a wonderful day tomorrow. See you again.